Hey everyone, it's The Eclectic Dev. Today we're gonna to look at how to debug within Visual Studio our Azure functions that use the more modern, isolated worker model. Let's check it out. All right, the very first step to save ourselves some headache and frustration is to go ahead and get a little bit of housekeeping done before we start debugging the actual functions. Very first thing is with Visual Studio 2022 or any version you're using, it's important to keep the IDE itself up to date. Now you usually have a little notification icon down in the bottom right hand corner that may tell you uh, which versions are available. But we also want to make sure that the Azure templates and uh, tools are up to date as well. If I go into the tools menu and down to options, under the projects and solutions in the tree, you can see Azure functions. There's an option here to check for updates. It'll tell you what's installed, but we can go ahead and press that. And it says there are tool set and template updates available. So let's go ahead and download and install that first, and then we'll move on to the next step. Once the Azure function tool sets are up to date, it'll indicate as such, we can close this dialog and let's go get the Azure core tools. All right, installing the Azure Function Core Tools is a good idea for a comprehensive way to test. Now, if you're strictly testing from the IDE, you may not necessarily need these, but if you're going to test from the command line, which I will show, you will need these. Uh, it also unlocks some additional power, the ability to use the func or function commands like function start or func start, func init, uh, the ability to create new templates like funk new so it's a good idea to have this it also allows for uh, supporting non.net function types local emulation of the full azure functions menu so it's a good idea to install this now depending on the operating system you're on there'll be different ways for windows which i'm on a pc i'm going to go ahead and install the msi i can grab this package we'll go ahead and get this installed here all right so i've got the azure function core tools ready to install go through and install this. Now, one note about this particular package is it's a static version. So if you wanna update it in the future, you'll have to add or remove this from the operating system and then update it. So we'll finish getting this installed and then we'll move on to the last piece of housekeeping uh, before we get into the configuration. Excellent, our installation is finished, so we're ready with that. Now, quick mention, if you're using Visual Studio Code, you can also install this via NPM globally. So you can install the Azure Function Core Tools in that manner. There's multiple ways that you can get these tools installed depending on the IDE you're using. Also, we're going to need Azureite. Now, if you're using Visual Studio, this is already built in and installed with it. If you were using Visual Studio Code, you would need to install this separately through NPM. But to mention what Azureite does, it emulates Azure storage, things like blobs, queues, and tables, so that if we're using any of this, you'll want that piece in place as well. With Visual Studio, we've got it out of the box. So let's go over to Visual Studio and now take a look at our configuration. In my demo Azure function app here, I have two different functions. I've got one for an HTTP trigger, and I also have one for a timer trigger. Now, again, I mentioned this is using the new isolated worker model versus the older and soon to be legacy in process model. If you've recently converted over, that can give you some troubles when you're trying to debug your Azure functions. So make sure that you've made all the correct updates, including the attributes, uh, especially inside if I go into the project file, many of the packages have changed from the old web jobs to the new Azure Functions worker SDKs and library uh, that you'll need to include in there, as well as the Azure Functions version. I'm also using the long-term support here of .NET 8. So I've got everything in working order and now it's time to look at the different configurations. For debugging Azure Functions directly within Visual Studio, we'll wanna focus on the launch settings.json. Now, not too many properties to look at here. If we go each one, the command line indicates that this is a project and it will be uh, spun up debugging using the .NET run as opposed to the func start, which we'll look at through the command line in a little bit. We've got the port set here so that for our HTTP trigger, we can call it via localhost. Uh, but initially it won't launch the browser. That's not a required property, but it's explicit there. Also environmental variables 
this is the Azure Web Jobs Storage, so this indicates to use Azureite. But the main one here we want to look at is this environmental variable functions worker runtime .NET isolated. This is the real key one to ensure that we are indicating which of those models, not the old in process, but the new isolated worker model that we are using. With this, we should now be able to spin up and debug our Azure functions. So let's go ahead and open those two files and put some breakpoints. We have our HTTP trigger that we can call as well as our function timer that right now is set to fire off every five minutes. So we'll start by looking at the HP trigger and let's get this started up debugging. So we can hit F5 to debug or we can go ahead and start it directly in the IDE. Just remember that if you have multiple name profiles within launch settings JSON like this isolated worker model functional, if you had added multiple, make sure to select the correct one. We'll go back over, start it up. What this will do is bring up this command window right here and show us which Azure functions it has recognized within our application. And we can see right away, we've got the function HTTP trigger test, as well as the timer trigger that has been recognized as well. Also, it gives us an indication of the local host and the port that it's running on so that we can test our HTTP trigger. The idea here is that we're trying to get successfully debugging our application. So at this point, again, if you hit any errors, you don't have the right SDK, the right configuration, you're gonna know it at that point, you can debug those problems and get it corrected so that we will be able to debug the application. I'm going to go ahead and use that and just click on this function or this uh, URL right here and away we go. It has called directly into it. Now I could debug the application as needed. So I could go into here, uh, debug along the lines, figure out what it's saying. It logs to the command line. Also, it'll come up in the browser, welcome to Azure Functions, because that's what this particular HTTP trigger does. Now, let's go ahead and stop it for a second. I'm gonna go over to the timer trigger and show how that one works. So we'll remove the breakpoint here, go over to the timer trigger. Let's go over here and use Copilot to help us out. I wanna update this cron value. Let's say update to run, let's say every uh, 10 seconds, because maybe I don't remember the exact uh, syntax for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and have it help me out here. Again, not a requirement for running our Azure Functions, but just a little helpful for me here. So I didn't have to go look that up. This will run every 10 seconds. Now, whether I need to debug the constructor or the actual method itself. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll go back over. Let's start this back up. And the idea this time is that it should spin up and we should be able to debug within this timer trigger. Now, what you may do with your settings is go ahead and knock those values down. Uh, to a short value like I did so that you can debug it very quickly. And there we go, it's gone in. We can debug our application just the same like we did before, go through it and I've uh, proceeded on and it's logged and it's running every five seconds. So maybe I wanna step through it with the execution and then we can continue on through multiple times. So we've successfully debugged it locally using the IDE itself. But I wanna show you one additional way through the developer PowerShell on how to debug these Azure functions as well. So let's take a look at that. Using the Azure functions core tools that we installed earlier, we can use those function or func commands to run our Azure functions. And then we can attach the debugger to it as well. Not knowing every requirement or how things need to be run with your particular Azure function, this gives you some flexibility. Note here as well that for the function commands we're about to run from the developer PowerShell, that it will use the local settings.json file when we spin this up here locally. And it has the important functions worker runtime with the .NET isolated. So this is a streamlined file, but it has the important values that we need to run these commands. So I have the developer PowerShell open here, although I could have a command window open separately, and I'm going to issue a func start. 
Do know that if you're running into troubles, you can add the verbose at the end here, which will give additional logging. So what we should see here is a similar behavior. It's going to spin up and recognize which Azure functions we have, tell us if there's any errors. In this case, we don't. And once again, you can see that we've got the HP trigger as well as the timer trigger. Now, the thing about running it this way is we don't have debugging capabilities because we've run it outside of the IDE having the hooks into the debugger. But what we do see is that they're running successfully because we can see the logger. If needed, what we can do is go up to the debug menu, attach to process. If you filter on .NET, not the func.exe, believe it or not, but for the .NET, if you attach to that process, now this runs every 10 seconds, so here in just a matter of seconds, there we go, we've got the debugger on it. We can step into it or step through it, check our values, you know, do whatever kind of troubleshooting that we need and that we're looking after and continue on. Of course, this is gonna run every 10 seconds, but we've shown here that even with an external process using the Azure core function tools and the func start, I have the capability to attach a debugger if needed, giving flexibility. So if you need to stop that, you can stop the individual debugger here within the IDE. Just remember down in the PowerShell or command window that you have, it will continue to run. So you can hit control C to stop execution there as well. So you have multiple ways for flexibility to either debug your Azure functions directly within Visual Studio and the IDE with the proper configuration or using external tools that may mirror your cloud situation, but yet still attach a debugger so that you have full capability to troubleshoot and debug all of your code. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Check out the other videos on the channel. And until next time, this is The Eclectic Dev. We'll see you later.